Summative assessments are conducted annually in our schools in order to provide data on the proficiency levels of our students. These assessments are broken down into subject areas. Each area is given a specific score that determines success. Those students who score above these numbers are proficient. Those who score below are not. However, this method does not take into account any improvement a student has made in the past year. Also, the tests group students by grade level, not ability level. The student growth model attempts to alleviate both of these things. Imagine our students as horses in a race. This race is the annual test they must take, such as I-STEP Plus. The first year that the growth model is used, all students must run in the race as usual. The time in which they finish, their score, is recorded. All students who receive the same score within each grade are categorized together. This can be thought of as placing a color-coded saddle blanket on each horse. Those who receive the same score in year one wear the same color. These are called academic peers. After a year of further learning, all the students are ready for their second race. Again, all the students run together. However, the time in which each one finishes, each one's score, is only compared to other horses wearing the same color. In this way, each one's success is measured against only those who started the year with the same level of ability. This provides educators with a more equitable view of growth. Student growth and achievement are analyzed together. Once they are analyzed, they are graphed on a quadrant. The four areas of the quadrant used are high achievement, high growth, low achievement, high growth, high achievement, low growth, I am just fine where I am. In low achievement, low growth. When a teacher analyzes the growth model, they should consider some important questions. These questions include, what surprises you the most about performance? How much did the student gain throughout the year? Is the growth adequate enough for the student to remain proficient over time? Did the student grow enough to pass the state standardized test? What changes should be made to my instruction in order to be effective? In order to compute scores in the student growth model, there has to be two test scores to compare. The first comes from year one. The second year, the distribution of scores between that group are compared. If the average distribution is 50% growth, then the individual student is compared to the number. In order for schools to begin to analyze a student's growth, the student must be enrolled in school for 126 days out of the school year. Schools are then able to compute the average percent passing by grade and content area. Then they calculate the median growth percentile. In doing so, educators are able to look at individual scores instead of masses of data. This allows teachers to focus on the needs of the student and how to plan instruction. Because of this, growth models are an avenue for teachers to follow in order to aid all students toward a successful career in learning.